YouTube, YouTube, what did YouTube down home news TV? I'm Dre. <clears throat> Got a video clip coming from CNN. The title is Should Democrats worry about Trump's gains with black men? Hear what two black Democratic leaders think. Let's check it out. New Times poll released this weekend shows uh, Vice President Harris at 78% among black likely voters. That's nearly 10 points behind what President Biden got in the, that's according to the 2020 exit polls. So one in five black men are saying that they're supporting Donald Trump. Why do you think that is? Listen, uh, uh, let me tell you something this morning. Uh, black men are not going to vote for Donald Trump in any significant numbers. There'll be some. We're, we're not monolith. Uh, but as black folk uh, in general, black men in particular, consider who Donald Trump is, uh, as, as they consider the fact that this is the man who literally took out a full page ad in the New York Times uh, saying that uh, these young teenagers uh, back in the 1980s who were accused of a horrific crime uh, should receive the death penalty. And then when it was proven uh, that the exonerated uh, five, the Central Park Five, were actually innocent, Donald Trump has shown no deal of concern about what they went through, no deal, no, no bit of contrition about it. Uh, he's doubled down on his position. This is who he is. And uh, black men know that as they watch him deal with uh, his own criminal problems and, and concerns, uh, that the criminal justice system certainly doesn't handle them the way it handles him. Uh, on the other hand, you've got Kamala Harris, uh, who, uh, in her work as a prosecutor, uh, found ways to give uh, people a path towards a better life, uh, who has spent her whole life as, uh, as, as a lawyer, uh, as a senator, and now as vice president, centering the concerns of ordinary people. Uh, again, we're not a monolith, uh, but... Uh, So, uh, <clears throat> J.D. Vance Horn, meet the press this morning, and he was talking about how um, the situation in Florida, the Carolinas, with the past few hurricanes, and how the overall majority of people on the ground that live there have a different view on what their... Uh, political leaders in that state <clears throat> say it contradicts everything they say. And the reason why I bring that up is there's a guy floating around on YouTube that states that the vice president withheld uh, <clears throat> information within this case that would, prop, that would more likely have exonerated him from the death penalty <clears throat> and they just seem to tuck those under the rug like it never happens and they I don't know it's weird it's just weird to me uh, this this idea that large numbers of black men are going to vote for Donald <clears throat> Trump is not going to happen. Your friend, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, who you campaigned with in Michigan, says that the message she's hearing from black men is, quote, Democrats take us for granted. Donald Trump talks to us directly. Are you concerned about black men voting for Trump, Trump or staying home? Well, thank you very much for having me. Yes, I am concerned. Uh, about black men staying home or voting for Trump. Uh, but my concerns don't uh, uh, tend to keep me uh, from being energetic uh, about this campaign. Uh, because I was in Michigan uh, campaigning with Debbie uh, last weekend. Uh, I thought our swing through Michigan was very, very effective. I met uh, with black men. I met uh, with black uh, religious leaders. I met with black uh, union leaders. And quite frankly, uh, I think we had very frank and direct discussions. And I don't uh, see and feel what I'm reading about in news reports. Yes, black men like everybody else want to know exactly what I can expect uh, from uh, Harris administration 
and I've been very direct with them. Uh, and I've also contrasted that with what they can expect from a Trump administration. We will expect Project 2025 to be a full-blown policy in his administration. And what would that policy be? I described it on the first night of our national convention, and I've been described it that way uh, ever since. It will be Jim Crow 2.0. Now, you know, I'm the ninth African-American serving Congress from South Carolina. That means there were eight before me. The problem is there were 95 years between number eight and number nine. And the problem... So... If it's going to be Jim Crow 2.0, as he states, do y'all think he will be removed from his position? Mm, I don't know. Let's continue. Policies that the 95 years that kept us out of government, out of uh, this economy, is called Jim Crow. And if you look at Project... 2025, it will be Jim Crow 2.0. And I am amazed at the number of people who actually are interested in contrasting that. And I think that we had a lot of success up in Michigan so being able to explain that. ...credit during the first year of your child's life. What are you talking about? Pretty sure everybody's seen the videos of <clears throat> that's been going around with Obama speaking to black men about not being as energetic about this race like they were when he was running. But um, honestly, from my perspective, when he was running, it was something new and boring to a lot of us. So. Yeah, of course, a lot of blacks were uh, enthusiastic about it. That was the first time I ever voted. I voted for him. But, um, I was, yeah, I was joking, but followed the traditional route. And, uh, yeah, as time went on, like they mentioned at the, uh, I think it was the Democratic Convention, We've been living under uh, the policies that Democrats would have passed, what was it, four, eight of Obama, four Biden, four Trump. So what's that, 12 years with a Democratic president? And I think the people have chosen or spoken for the most part. But uh, let me know what y'all think about this. Down on News TV.